Hey guys, welcome to Concordia On Air. Coming up on today's show. In news, photographers needed. Weather for your mid sun break. In sports, CC doing some winning. Tricks and treats on A&E. All that and more. Stay tuned. Hey guys, I'm Dylan. And I'm Paul. And we're your hosts. And today we are carving pumpkins because mm -hmm. it's our Halloween episode. Yep, it's Halloween's coming up pretty soon. A couple of weeks, but... Well, since there's not going to be a show next week due to Paul's Due to break, mid -Sam, yep. which is coming up. This weekend. So, long weekend. No big deal. You can figure out what you're going to be for Halloween. Mm -hmm. you can get some pumpkins, start yeah. carving them. Yeah, so it'll be good for... We're, we're going to show you how to prepare for the weeks coming up. Yes, definitely. It's a pretty big deal around these parts. We have these, they're trace things that you can tape on here. So we'll do that. And then it shows you what part to remove of your pumpkin. Mm -hmm. So we're going to carve these or attempt to carve these for today's show. Mine's and a cat bat. It's a cat and a bat combined. It's no <laughs> big deal. It's pretty cool. Mine's a witch with a cauldron. Yep. That's not as cool as a cat bat. I'm just, I'm just going to throw that out there right now. Yeah, sure. <laughs> what? Cats are probably one of the best things ever. ever. They're kind of evil. No, they're not. They are so evil. Elaborate on why you would believe that. Because they're just evil. That is not true. It's true. It's so true. But anyways, at the end of the show, if we get these done and they actually like we'll look decent, done. we'll show the them best. to you. We'll get these done. They're going to look so great. You can pretty so. much find the trace things and all the tools that come like together, um, usually at any store now this time of the year. Um, yeah, mo yeah, most stores have Halloween stuff. If not, yeah. then they need to really get on that because it's coming up. Coming up very coming up fast. soon. Um, we already kind of jumped the gun a little bit and took up the tops of the pumpkins. It's true. We cheated. But it makes it easier so we can show you guys what you need to do. Yeah, because we, we, know, we know you guys didn't want to see that. So. so, and then like an important tip is when you actually, once you take this off, you need to go in here and you need to cut off the inside a bit. Mm -hmm. So that way you can reach your hand in there easier, but be careful not to cut off more because then the lid won't fit and then that's, that's just terrible. So gotta be careful of that, definitely. And then you can start taking stuff out like this. Pumpkin seeds. Yep. You can also bake them, make a great treat. One of the, my floor mates made pumpkin pancakes using I feel like that's not okay. pumpkin something. Yeah, it, I, I didn't get to try them, but my roommate did. Really Apparently they were really good. So pumpkins can be used for lots of different reasons. It's really slimy on my hands, just so you know. <laughs> well, it does get really dirty. At least you don't have fishnets on because this is going to get all also, gross. Also, make sure you don't put your hands in here. If you have an open wound, it will sting. It will sting. I learned that the hard way a little bit, even though it's just a paper cut. <laughs> it still didn't feel very pleasing. Yeah. What? I'm just saying. I'm just watching out for my cobbers. Okay. I'm just saying. But, yeah. Well, we're going to continue here. So let's, let's see what's going on in the world of news with Maddie Sam, and Sam and Maddie. Yep. Yep. Welcome to the news. I'm Sam Homestead. And I'm Maddie Campbell. Concordia's student-run newspaper is in need of help. The Concordian is currently looking for regular photographers to contribute pictures. The requirements include attending short weekly meetings on Fridays at 9.20 a.m., accepting one to two news, opinions, sports, or pulse assignments a week, and contacting writers to confirm that their story has been taken. Also, it would help to be open to suggestions and willing to learn news photography techniques. Don't have a camera? No problem. The Concordian owns a professional camera that is available to use for stories. If you are interested in helping out the Concordian, contact zroe at cord.edu. 
Minnesota's Hamlin University School of Law, U of M, University of St. Thomas, and the William Mitchell College of Law are sponsoring the second annual Upper Midwest Law Fair. This event will take place on Saturday, November 5th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. This is a great opportunity for students who are considering law school. You will have the chance to meet with representatives from each of the 15 participating law schools from the Midwest. Learn about the law school application process about admission staff members, speak with representatives about their law schools, and explore legal education options. To register, visit www.stthomas.edu slash law slash admissions slash Upper Midwest Law Fair. The 2011 Tri-College Career and Internship Fair will be held on Wednesday, November 9th from 1 to 5 p.m. at the Ramada Plaza Suites in Fargo. There will be a free shuttle to and from the event. This event is open to sophomores, juniors, and seniors, and will feature hosts from over 75 national and local employers to recruit students for jobs and internships. Come and get an advantage for your future employment. Make sure to dress in business attire and have your resume ready. You must register by November 2nd at 7 p.m. For further information, go to www.concordiacareercenter.com. Come learn more about Fargo Moorhead's diverse community. Annual Diversity Conference taking place Wednesday, November 9th at MSUM's campus. Students will be able to experience a local conference with many topics, including urban Native Americans, communications across the generations, and many more. Visit www.culturaldiversitysources.org slash page 15.php to find out more to register for this event. Contact Sonia Paulson at scaulso one at cord.edu before October 20th. The first 30 to register are free. Everything for Jesus has graduated from the Sharp County, North Dakota High School for business. The Sharp County area is held at two church locations, sponsoring $4,000 scholarships for each year. Application, applicants must be education majors who graduated from the Cass County High School and have at least a 3.0 GPA. Applications can be found in the Financial Aid Office and must be completed by next March. North Dakota may soon be producing more oil than any other state except te Texas. According to the Associated Press, North Dakota is currently ranked fourth in terms of oil production, but increasing production may propel the state even further up the ranks. North Dakota has been experiencing an oil boom ever since new technologies made it possible to drill for previously unattainable oil. The state is expected to overtake California for the number three spot next year and may pass Alaska soon after that. Hey Audrey, how's the C Circle K and CSC doing? Hey guys, thanks for the awesome news. David, Audrey with us from CSC. Can you tell us a little bit about the drive that you guys are doing with Circle K? Yeah, we're doing a clothing drive that's set up in the atrium and we're collecting um, just clothing from all students and faculty um, just through Friday. All right, so they have until the end of the week to do this? Yes. And then where should they bring the clothes if they have some? We have a table set up in the atrium. In the atrium? Yeah. Okay, and then how did you get involved with CSC? Um, well, I've always had a passion for service. Me and service. so, um, all right. yeah, just... I, I found CSC and I decided to get involved on more of a leadership level. Yeah. And Are you enjoying it? Yes, definitely. That's good. And how can people or students get involved with this? Um, well, CSC, our main thing that we do is we set students up with different um, service organizations in the community. And okay. so um, you can go to one of our open houses at the beginning of each semester um, and volunteer there. Otherwise, we have group projects throughout the semester as well. Sweet. Okay. And then um, is there more of a demand for guys' clothes or girls' clothes? And then is there any certain type of clothes that they want more since the weather's changing? Um, I guess pretty even between male and female clothing, okay. but we're definitely looking for jackets and hats, scarves, more winter clothing right okay. now. Is it for like our age kids then? Or? Um, yes, we're anticipating the young adult age okay. group, but we'll take adult. anything and everything. All right. So do you have anything that you'd like to tell us about? CSC and um, definitely get involved. Come to our open houses. Um, when is the next one? Do you know? It should be in the beginning of January. Okay, sweet. Yeah. So if you guys have any clothes that you would be willing to donate, definitely stop by the atrium, bring them to them, and then they can give them to the community. And it 
be great, definitely for Brew. Um, we are wanting all to get involved with becoming responsibly engaged in the world, part of what Concordia has for us. And so I am going to see what I should wear next week with Emily from the weather. Hey, it sounds like you should be turning in your coats and anything warm that you don't need anymore because it's going to get chilly. As of right now, we have um, pretty clear, so that's a plus side, no rain or snow in that case. Um, blue zone, cool zone, we're going to get chilly. It's going to be around 40s, and that's going to kind of stay through the week. Um, look at out in California, come on, 97, come on. That's really not fair. But I guess that's what we get for living in North Dakota and Minnesota. Um, as I said before, we really don't have a whole lot going on. Um, there's a little bit of activity out towards Wisconsin and Michigan, a little bit more so than not. Um, there's not really a whole lot going on in California and off the coast there. Um, and same goes for Florida. There's a little bit of activity way down, but don't really need to worry about that. Then for our five-day forecast, it's going to be a little chilly. I think by Saturday it should be up in the 50s, so I mean kind of fallish again. Be able to enjoy your mid sem break, so that'll be pretty nice. And now that we have that, um, and just in case you missed it, we have a recap of Coronation. Last week was homecoming here at Concordia, and once again, a new homecoming king and queen were crowned. Skylar Vilt, my best friend, the sexiest man on campus, won. Um, which was not a surprise to me. I'd been telling him that all week. He didn't believe me, though. And then Elise Tweeten, a lovely little girl from the great state of North Dakota, from the great city of Fargo-Moorhead, um, also won. And they are our future king and queens for the year. But how does it feel to be on the court? It's an honor. It really is. It's just a good time being known or knowing that you are known by a lot of people. I don't know. It makes you feel special. Coronation was really, really fun. Um, all my best friends are on Coronation Court. So it was good to just hang out with them and kind of go through this experience because none of us knew what was going on. Um, and we just had a really, really good time. There's lots of laughing and there's just a lot of like camaraderie. What did Graham think of the court this year? Um, I thought the court was exceptionally gorgeous this year. Um, not that it hasn't been in the past, but especially this year. Um, yeah, I thought we walked really well. We didn't trip, so that was good. The junior crown bearers were adorable. Um, it was just a really, really good experience for me. For Concordia On Air, this is Hannah Johnson. For that awesome coronation package and congratulations to the new king and queen. I am here to show our hosts a little bit of yoga this week. Just since it's mid sound I figure you guys are probably really stressed out. Like I know, I'm getting kind of stressed. All the tests, definitely. Yeah, so I'm going to kind of talk about some yoga. We're um, going to attempt it. Yeah, and you guys are going to have to kind of follow. We'll start with like beginner poses. That'd be probably good. And we'll work up to some more difficult ones so you can really take advantage. All right. So first what we're going to do is we are just going to stand in a straight line. And it's really important to breathe through your nose and out through your nose oh, as well. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, and while you're doing this, this is called mountain pose with your palms facing outward. Should my feet be together? They should be. Okay. And then flex everything in your legs so it's all tight. Like your glutes, everything. Take a couple nice deep breaths. Like palms like this? Yep, that okay. looks really great. Hey, thanks. Okay, and then from here, we're gonna go down to the mat and sit down with our legs straight. And this pose is great for people that have trouble sleeping at night. That's me. Yeah, well, this is great. Oh, mm -hmm. I'm learning a lot. What we're going to do is we're going to bring our arms up, exhale, and reach forward, and just hold it. Ow. <laughs> and you don't want to stretch till it hurts, okay. just so it, you feel a little pull. We don't want any tears. <laughs> so just kind of stretch. OK. Now let's come up, move to a little trickier one. I'm ready for this. OK. You've probably heard of this one. It's a pretty common pose called tree pose. 
It Ooh. involves a lot of balancing. Okay. Balance. So we should probably separate a little bit so we don't bonk into each other. What you're going to do is you're going to take, let's take our left foot first and bounce it along your ankle. Just kind of get that foot ready to be holding up your whole body. And if you can, take it up as high. You can take it above your knee. And then these pants are really if you restricting. have your balance, you can take it all the way up. I don't know if I can do that. I can try it. And then put your hands near your heart. So we're going to focus our energy. Make a fist like you're about to pray. And bend it up. Oh, I'm going to fall. And then extend your branches. Tree. <laughs> The tree Who of life. Who feels less stressed? I Just do. Like, I do too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Okay, and then come back in. Okay. And that's all we have for our yoga. Nice. I definitely feel a little relaxed. Mm -hmm. I'm not stressed anymore. I know. Stress so is gone. So remember those poses when you're studying for your midterms. and Help you I, sleep. Yep, and I'm sure you'll do very well. And now on to sports with Hannah and Yao. All right, thank you, Katie. Say, Hannah, that's a nice shirt you got. Thanks, I'm a huge fan of the Twins. I know they haven't been doing very well this season. But... Oh, I, I know, don't, don't worry about it, yeah. don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, and you're a fan of the Bulls? Oh, oh, oh yeah, thank you. you know, when I get home, I'm gonna get some Jordans, because I mean, I love me some Jordans. I mean, who, who doesn't love Jordans? Come on now. I mean, <laughs> times are rough, but I mean, I gotta buy me some Jordans, but anyway. Definitely. Well, welcome to sports, everybody. I'm Yao Bodum. And I'm Hannah Johnson. Copper Cross Country Women took home their second multi-team invite of the year on Friday. This is the first time the Coppers have won. <laughs> sorry. First time the Coppers have won Jamestown Invitational in the past 12 years with head coach Marv Rowski. Senior Carolyn McGlynn finished in third place overall with a time of 1927. Paige Rigg followed closely behind with the time of 1952. Elizabeth Hansen and Casey Peterson were also among the top 10 finishers. The Cobbers' next meet will be held in St. Paul on October 29th. Last Saturday, Cobbers old and young united together at Jake's Stadium to cheer our Cobber football team to victory. In the beginning of, our of the first half, our Cobbers led the first touchdown, giving them a 7-3 lead. Around eight minutes left of the half, our Cobber men would get another touchdown, giving them a 14-3 lead at the end of the half. The second half, though, would be quite the battle. Augsburg would make a huge comeback, but our Cobbers held on by a measly four points. Down to the wire, our Co Cobber men pulled out one final touchdown in the fourth quarter, giving them the edge of a score of 38-26. Good job, Cobbers, of the homecoming victory. The Cobber men's soccer team took home a 3-1 win against Bethel on Saturday. This is the men's first conference win of the season. They are now 5-7-1 in the overall season. Riley McLean scored two goals and one assist to Jared Rice, who scored the first goal for the Cobbers about four minutes into the game. Bobby Spaja assisted McLean for the winning goal of the game. The Cobbers outshot Bethel 16 to 10. The men lost their game yesterday against St. Olaf 1 to 4. Their next game is scheduled for October 22nd in California. Just as we thought our Vikings were free from losing from the losing streak, they end up going back to going back to it last Sunday. In the first half, uh, in the first half, the uh, the Bears would pull out a whopping 26 points while our Vikings would only pull out three points. The second half, the Bears would pull out another 10 points, giving them the final score of 39 to 10. Come on, Vikings. I know they're still hoping you. The Cobber women's soccer team almost took home a win this past homecoming weekend, tying Bethel 2-2. Two to two. Concordia holds the title of less than two losses this season. The Cobbers are now 8-1 and one and 4 in the overall season. The Cobbers held a 10-4 and four shot advantage in the first half but remained tied throughout the whole game. Gina Wise scored both goals from the Cobbers with assists from Nicole Cohen and Libby Fransale. The women won against St. Olaf yesterday 1-0. Their next game is scheduled for October 22nd in California. Last Sunday, tragedy struck among the Indy 500 world when Dan Wheaton, two-time Indy 500, cha 500 champion passed away. His death was due to head trauma in a fiery car crash pileup involving 15 other racers. 
He was airlifted from the scene and taken to the hospital, where he was pronounced dead. Indy racers took a five-lap series in remembrance for Wheaton. The others in the crash were rushed to the emergency as well, but expected to make a full recovery. It is a terrible loss for the Wheaton family and for the racing community. And now Haley and Byrne will tell us about a sustainability project on campus. So about three years ago, um, Casio came up with the Green Slim brand or line of projectors, which was eliminating the lamp and using some sort of an LED laser light source that is rated for 20,000 hours of use. The r light rating for a projector is rated in lumens. And the average projector has about 2,000 to 3,000 lumens for use in a classroom or office environment. These projectors from Casio have a rating of 2,000 lumens, which is, uh, which is exactly the same as the conventional mercury vapor lamp projectors we have in our older classrooms. When I looked into them, I found out I could get the model's brightness that I wanted for just under $1,000 a piece. Well, $1,000 a piece is next to nothing when compared to the lamp costs. So I figured I basically got the projectors for better than free. Thanks for that illuminating information, Haley. And Bernie, welcome to a and &E. I'm Mariah Moen. And I'm Logan Rydell. Next Saturday, the 29th, there will be a CAC-sponsored Halloween bash in the Knutson Campus Center. Well, come dressed up in your Halloween costume and, the, and dance the night away. There will also be a haunted maze to check out among the excitement. This will be a fun chance to go all out and dress up as, you cra as crazy as you want. The event runs from 9 p.m. to 1 a.m., so get ready to show off your costume and eat some delicious treats as you celebrate Halloween Cobber style. This Thursday, CEC will be hosting Halloween Trivia Night in the maze at 10 p.m. with an assortment of categories ranging from Halloween candy to horror movies. So you've ever been wondering, hey, how many types of candy corn are there? Who is the man of a thousand faces? Then come on down to see how much everyone really knows about the spookiest day of the year. Another fun Halloween event will be held on Friday, October 28th. Students can gather at the maze to be terrified by the Halloween movie night. The movie being shown is The Thing. The movie is set in Antarctica with a shape-shifting killer alien, so this is sure to give you chills. This scary event will last from 9 to 11, so show up and enjoy free popcorn and candy while you celebrate the scariest time of the year. Remember when you first saw Harry Potter and that banquet in the Great Hall and thought, I want to eat like that? Well, here's your chance. On November 2nd, Anderson will be hosting the Harry Potter-themed meal. Yes, all you witches and wizards will be eating Hogwarts style. They might even have some Birdie Bots every flavor beans. So apparate or use that handy-dandy flu network to make your way down to Diaz for some wizard and muggle fun. Looking to get off campus for some Halloween fun? The Hub is having an 18-plus Halloween party with Tommy Lee and DJ Arrow. This event will take place Monday, October 31st, starting at 9.30 p.m. in the venue, with doors opening at 9. The tickets are $10 both in advance and at the door. Make sure not to miss out on this great party night, and remember, costume attire is welcome. When trick-or-treating, it's always a bummer to receive candy that's not quite as delicious as others. So if you're wondering what to give out on Monday the 31st, here are the top five Halloween candies. At number five, we have the Milky Way. This delectable treat is an out of this world experience. At four, we have the Kit Kat bar. For when you need a break from trick or, trick or treating, make sure to chomp down on one of these. At three, we have the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup, the ultimate, ult ultimate candy. These peanut butter and chocolate goodnesses are always an option. At two, we have Snicker, Snickers. You can never go wrong with this American classic. And at number one, candy corn. Even though they might not be the most popular, they are the staple of Halloween. And this year, try changing it up by mixing your candy corn with some salted peanuts and presto, you got a new snack.
Hey guys, we're back. <laughs> we are carving our pumpkins. You mm. might be able to see the bit of my design here. Can you take not it out, quite, those pieces? Almost. See, it's ready to pop out. It's not quite done. We're working on it though. Mine's getting along. Uh, my knife broke, so <laughs> so I so I wasn't able to do much. He's a little behind. I am a bit <laughs> flustered because of this knife, the situation I have right here. But my cat bat is coming. It, my kitty bat, not my cat bat. I'm kitty sorry, bat. it says right there. Oh, yep, it That's does. what I meant to say. My kitty bat's coming along pretty well. I, I just, and we have all this here. Yep, so take the seeds, we can bake them. I highly suggest you guys carve some pumpkins. It's one of my favorite things to do, actually. It really is, she keeps talking about it, and <gasps> she just loves Halloween. I do, no it's big deal. one of my favorite things ever. Really? Yeah, That's I love Halloween. It's my favorite holiday. Is it really? It is. It's a pretty good holiday. I'll tell oh, you that much. I got a chunk coming out. That's really cool. Ready? I'm, you have, yeah, mine's struggling. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing anymore. See, look, I can get a chunk out too. Was it a, supposed to come? Yeah, this whole hey. part. See? Progress. See, you this can, is. You can definitely tell is this definitely is a kitty bat. Do you see the witch? Do you see her? I don't see it. Oh, whatever. Just kidding, I see it. It's there. We are working hard, but I doubt we're going to finish it in time, you guys. So. I will. It's my goal. Finish this before in like 30 seconds. 30 seconds? I got this. Okay. Well, anyways. Actually, I'm not going to do that. that. That could get dangerous. Someone could get hurt. I'm going to stop. For Paul's safety and definitely my safety, mm -hmm. we are going to stop carving at this time. And we suggest you guys check out our website at www.concordiaonair.com. You can watch our episodes. Yeah, we, we got some up there. Yep, but no for deal. now, I'm Dylan. I'm Paul. And we'll see you next week. Bye.